Hello everybody and welcome back. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Deborah Hatswell and you're listening to BBR Investigations. I was recently contacted by a gentleman named Steve who is from the Lincolnshire area and he wanted to share two experiences that he had over a span of 25 years. Steve chatted with me in a private call and he was kind enough to allow me to tape our conversation. He's happy for me to share his interview and all of his experiences with you all. Steve was able to sketch the creature he saw in 1994, and that's the image that you're looking at now. If you're hearing this on the podcast, that's actually the thumbnail image for the podcast. Steve described the creature he saw as a wild man. In the same area, in 2019, Steve experienced something strange on that same stretch of road. He saw a dark figure move behind a brick building into the cemetery. In tonight's interview with Steve, he explains both events that happened to him close to Station Road in Scorby. I will give you a quick rundown of events and then we'll listen to the interview with Steve. Steve said, It was Sunday the 17th of July 1994 when I saw the strange wildman creature. I am a DJ and ex-radio host, and I consider myself a very confident person. The event is one I struggle to explain. I was hosting a disco that night at the Hibblestow Club, and everything went as normal. It was after packing up and leaving that things went strange. I left, I drove on to the B1207 road, and when I saw something move out of the corner of my eye, and it was a figure stooped in the road, examining something in the roadway. And then I saw it walk out onto the road. It then crossed the road and went off into a field, and it was going left to right across the road. My first thought was that there must have been somebody injured in an accident lying out there on the road, and that's why this figure was stooped looking at the road itself. And then I saw it was covered in hair, matted, bedraggled hair, And I described its build as almost like a bodybuilder. And I am almost certain it was holding something in its right hand. The red light at the back of my car then shone on the fur on the left-hand side of its face. It seemed to be looking back at me as I moved past it. And I caught it in the red glow of my lights. That was it for me. I put my foot down and drove home. At this point in the conversation, I asked Steve if he could tell me what name he gave the figure that he saw, and he answered straight away with, the wild man. 28 years ago, he said, when I first saw it, I would have described it as being a wild man. I believe there's enough land and food resources here to accommodate even the human race. If you know your foodstuffs and forage, it wouldn't be a problem for a large creature to do the same. Steve went on to explain. I'm a little less sure about this next experience. It happened close to the cement works. It was summer when this event happened. I remember it was around August 2019. I work in agriculture, so I don't get many days off in a year. It was about 7.15am. And as you leave Scorby, there was a cemetery. And it was there that I saw what I believe was a black figure. The figure was taller than normal, moving across the cemetery. This time, I stopped the car and I got out and I looked around. I stood next to my bonnet with my hand on it, just watching for this figure to emerge from the back of the building. I waited probably 30 to 40 seconds, but it never appeared. I spoke with Steve on the phone, so at the time, I didn't have my recording equipment with me, but I did manage to take the call, and Steve kindly allowed me to share the audio of him speaking about his experiences. I have invited Steve back on the show so we can chat in more detail about these events and also some of his more paranormal experiences. I'd rang him just to have a chat about the events and I normally record the call so that I don't miss any details. Here is a recorded part of our conversation. Now you will hear some background noise but I hope I've kept it to a minimum. We pick up the conversation where we're both chatting between ourselves about how In the beginning, after an experience, you're confused, upset, shocked. And the idea of coming forward and sharing it with the public is not something you ever have any intention of doing. 
for some of us, time can heal that. It can heal the fear of ridicule because you search for answers. The pull of that just gets stronger. I've spoken to witnesses who have never shared their experience, even to this day. Not even with their husbands, their wives or their partners. They keep it to themselves forever. And that is a heavy burden to carry alone. Hopefully, as each witness comes forward, it will make it easier for somebody else to share their truth. Listen to Steve as he explains his experience and what happened that day to him. Coming back there now, um, I feel how you probably did. I mean, I've seen the interview um, with yourself on, on, on the YouTube channel, mm. and it, it, it does kind of take you back. I mean, I'm a confident person. I've been a DJ. I've been a club DJ, radio presenter. Always, always confident, always happy to put myself out there. But there's just something that I cannot explain. It's not, you know, it's, it's nothing that any sane person, I think, would, would make up. Um, but I saw something that night that I honestly cannot explain. And I think because of the location that I've actually seen this, I've actually seen something like, like I saw. And the more you delve deeper, the more people, like I can say, have had the same kind of sightings or same kind of experience or felt <laughs> exactly like I felt. You know, it's, uh, it's took me a fair few years to actually... You know, to anybody about it. I mean, I married my wife four years after, and it's only like quite literally over the past year she's known what actually happened. I'm quite happy to share now what, what I what I experienced. I mean, it was it was Sunday, uh, the seventeenth of July, nineteen ninety four. It was basically about ten past twelve. From what I remember, it was really warm, really really buggy night. And, We'd been doing a disco at um, Pibblestow Club. Uh, we, we, always a good night there. We, we'd pack the gear up. Back in the day, I was 24. Didn't drink. Um, you know, it, it was maybe a pint at half seven, then Pepsi the rest, rest of the night. Uh, it was a good night. Nothing nothing out of the ordinary. It, it was a good night. We packed up, said our goodbyes, and I left, and my mate left it in the van. Um I went down down West Street, Hibblestow, onto the, I think it's B1206, onto the B1207. Uh, windows were down, um, just, just to get a bit of breeze, mm. um, heading towards um, the A15 roundabout where um, Forest Pines is. But there's a bridge, I think there's a um, cement works on the, on the left-hand side. Um, I went over the bridge, past the, the cement works, uh, and that's the hill that leads from Hibblestow to Scorby. I think I'm about 20, 25 seconds after coming past the cement works. Some, something kind of caught my eye about 30 metres in front, moving um, left to right from one side of the road into the field. Right. It looked like it was stooped. I was picking something off, off the road because it, it stood up and was stooped and, and, and walked from, from left to right. I think it must have slowed down from around about 40, 50 miles an hour to around about 20. Um, I thought someone could have been injured in the road. That was, uh, that was obviously the first thing. First, I saw the hair, the, the, the fur, the matted, matted fur, really long. On the back of the neck, uh, and down the arms, but as it went to the right-hand side, I couldn't see the legs because it stepped into, into the grass. It definitely um, wasn't eight or nine foot tall. Um, it, it, it was more like maybe six and a half. I, w- I would say no more no more than seven, but I, I still say six and a half. It, it wasn't tall, but it, it was the bulk. Um, it, it was a bodybuilder, <laughs> as, as I, w- I would describe it. Um, the same, my, win- my windows were down, and there was, all I could hear from my side of the car was like a, like a whoop whoop sound. I think that repeated, I think around about four times. And then there was a grunt. Um, I'd gone past it by this time, by about 25, 30 foot. And to me, I'm not sure it did look like it had something in its right hand. 
with something that could have been picked off the road or not, it, it, it could have been. Um, it, it had the hand kind of like behind the body as it, as it walked away. Um, it looked like there was a ditch. The, the grass starts probably about five or six foot away. It seemed to drop down pretty quick. Um, it probably went from like six and a half, seven foot to probably five, four and a half, five foot. I'd gone past it by this time. Um, and my red lights from the back of the car gone on the on the on the floor, the left hand left hand side of the face. It seemed to be kind of looking back at me. This was shiny, like a human. Um, it had it had like a a, a gleam to the face. Right. No hair, no mm. no hair at all down on, on the face. I could I could see the the hair was definitely matted and unkempt. You know, down the back. It looked like it was like either like straw or or grass. I couldn't see any ears at all. Um, but the the barrel looked like it was much lower than what a human's would be. Kind of like stooped. It, the mouth was closed. Um, definitely closed. Then I kind of like felt absolutely bewildered. I don't know. That was it. I it, it was it was put down and. I drove home. I was living with mum and dad at the time, so luckily when they were in bed. When I got home and bed and you, know, you, you lay there and you, you, you think and your body's, I don't know, adrenaline and you, your brain's trying to work over time. Trying to think of, of what, you, what you actually think. Um, I think for the first couple of years, I was more worried or, or terrified of going, going back there. But now it's it doesn't bother me at all. You know, I drove drove past there a few times, and you know, you you remember it vividly. It doesn't it, it doesn't have the scare factor that it did back in the day. Driving past, um, yeah, loads of times. But uh, yeah, I'm quite happy to do that every day if if, if need be. Yeah, you know, 28 years ago, I would describe it as a wild man. I mean, he was the man eight because he wasn't. He wasn't a man and he wasn't an ape. He was kind of a combination of the two, you know? And we do hear them often with this this not sleek coat, this quite bedraggled almost. Yes, yes. Yeah, and I think that's what you've seen is this bedraggled look that they have. And I think there's more than enough, you know, foraging on the land, even humans to survive, berries and, and vegetables. And, yeah, it's, I think it would be easy for human to survive, so why why wouldn't anything else? Well, why yeah. not, you know? And if it's yeah. picking from the road, there are quite a lot of animals that cross the road at night, whether it be small scurrying ones, frogs, you know, the amount of... If you actually sat in the car and put your headlights on and just shined it at the road, because I do that a lot at Winter Hill, you'd yeah. be amazed how many things actually cross the road in front of you. Yeah, I can imagine. I've got a very similar account that I'm going to send you later. Further northeast, but similar thing out in the road, doing seems to be catching something from the road and then walks back off into the woods. What I thought was maybe another experience as well, but rather than that one, you know, the one in 1994 being absolutely 100% definite what I saw, the one that I saw a few years ago, I'm not so sure. Um, well, see, it, it was August. So it was it was summer again, and um, it was it was August by Holy Monday, two thousand nineteen. Like I say, I'm not sure about this, um, but there is, there is something that still plays on on my memory. Um, I was driving to work by Holy Monday because you know working in agriculture. It was about seven fifteen in, in the morning. Absolutely no traffic around at all. By Holy Monday, very very hot and hazy. Um, you know, I think it was like middle, middle of the heat wave from what I remember. Um, as you come out of Scorby, um, there's a cemetery on the left-hand side. I, I know it's a cemetery and I know it's cliched and, and everything. Um, but what I thought I saw was um, a, a black figure, taller than normal, moving across the cemetery um, behind a brick building in the, in the graveyard. Um Obviously, going back to the events in '94, this time I actually stopped the car. Deb, it was it was definitely quiet. You know, you always get the birds chirping, but that that morning it was just really quiet. I looked from my car, you know, from my the bonnet of my car. My hands was on was on the bonnet, mm -hmm. just looking at the the brick building where this this thing seemed to go. 
I must have waited about 30, 40 seconds. It, it, it could have been longer. Um, got back into the car. Um, I didn't actually see anything else move. Whether it was something that was, that was hiding or not, um, I'm not sure. Mm. I've worked in Brig for bloody, oh, 25 years, and I've never seen anything since. But I'm wondering why it didn't show itself or move out from behind the building as if it was, if it was hiding. But what I saw you know, in, in 1994, mm. 100% was a living, breathing creature. In 94, this was 100% living, breathing creature. It was solid. I know exactly what I saw. What I saw three years ago, I'm not so sure. Mm. You, you see it on social media. It's definitely this, so it's definitely that. Yeah. You know, unless you're you're there, but you've not made it up if you believe it. You know, I, I'd rather keep my opinions to myself. Mm. So there's, there's more people who's experienced as well that are now coming forward. Yeah. But that's why I'm saying, you know, I'm quite happy you're using that. My first yeah. name, Steve, you know, Please, if you saw something you can't explain, just please get in touch with Deb and come forward and have a chat. I would agree with Steve when he urges people that if they feel now that they can come forward, then they should. There are so many of us who understand what you're going through. We may even be able to help find a witness who saw the same thing as you or a person in your area or online that you can chat with. Thankfully, I was able to share some experiences with Steve that happened in the same area and I've included them in tonight's podcast for you. Steve went on to explain just how bountiful the county of Lincolnshire is and it's one of the largest providers of staple crops here in the UK. Every year, people arrive for seasonal work on the land and have done for centuries. There are wooded areas going right out to the coast And there are plentiful streams, dikes, ditches and brooks that run out to the estuary. It would make a very easy area to move around in, in times of dim light. It's normally at dawn and dusk when wild critters move. And I noticed it was just 10 minutes after midnight when Steve saw the figure in the road. Was the figure simply picking up some roadkill? Or one of the road crossing critters? You know, at this time of year, there's thousands of frogs that cross our roads, even in the moorland areas. I've seen several frog migrations, and at night, the road's full of tiny eyes. They get caught in the light. Sitting up on Spen Cobb on the moor, I often see rabbits, hares, bats, birds, pheasants, squirrels, rats, sheep, and even goats cross the road in front of the car. Mark and myself use us sit in silence. We watch the horizon and the sky for movement. I have a number of cases in the area and I like to visit as often as possible to see what the area is like at different times of day, week or year. I can work out the best foraging place then and on occasion find some wild gems. I discovered two crops of wild raspberries this year and they're drammed in my freezer. Maybe the creature seen by Steve was simply doing the same. Most of the animals don't even notice us. There's a car silent, me and Mark sit there in the dark. If I was partial to pheasant, I could lean out and pluck one through the window. They really do come that close to the car. Less than half a mile along the road, Steve was travelling. You reach a point where you can join the A15, the A18, the M18 on the M180. This part of the road is where a wild man was reported in June of 2018. A woman travelling towards Lincoln made the report after she returned home. Her initials are BL and she said, I'd like to report a sighting that happened only yesterday, the 18th of June 2018. It was between 1.30 and 2pm when myself and my partner were travelling on the A15 headed towards Lincoln. Now there is a lay-by on the road which is roughly a mile or so from the Hibblestow turn-off. As we were driving, we suddenly saw an upright moving figure as we were moving along the road. We caught sight of him about 20 foot past the lay-by. He was running upright on two legs. He was all black in colour and he was heading away from the road. As he ran, he was moving through the reed grasses and on into the bushes where we lost sight of him. I realised it was broad daylight and there was other traffic on the road, so this should not have happened. I wasn't on a dark, lonely road at night or in the middle of a vast forest in the wilds. 
I was on a Lincolnshire road. This is impossible, which has now been trying to debunk the whole experience to myself. But nevertheless, I can't talk myself out of what I saw yesterday. It might seem impossible to some, but I am certain of what I saw, and so is my partner. I asked the witness to describe what she saw before we chatted, so I didn't influence her in any way, which is something I do with all of the people that contact me. I usually hold back any information on events or site reports, so I'm not planting information or suggestions to the witness. The witness in this case said, I say him because his energy was male, at the risk of sounding like a crazy person. I see aura, I feel energies amongst other things. His energy continued to intrude my thoughts for the rest of the day. He knew someone had seen him and he was worried about this. As for his description, I would say he was around eight to nine feet tall and he was dead black in colour all over. One other thing to know, I have a dash cam in the car, so I checked the footage in the hopes that we caught him walking away, and there's a four-hour gap. My dash cam records anything out of the ordinary, i.e. heavier than normal braking, and even when the engine's off and stationary, the sensor picks up anything close to the vehicle. It will then randomly record at five minutes intervals. The last recording was at 12.03, just before we set off for the A15, and then nothing until I used the car again around 4pm that night. I don't know how to explain that. If our driver had taken a right-hand turn at the junction, they would have travelled for about two miles to an area that also has a strange 10-foot-tall creature that's been reported close to Humberside Airport. A man from the local area saw a 10 foot tall creature that was darker than the night run across the A18 near Humberside Airport. The creature, described darker than the night, ran across the A18 road. The creature was described as a dark mass, but it was first spotted by an elderly couple as they were driving along the road. Then a local man also saw the creature and he said, I thought it was a ghost at first. I could see it. And it had a humanoid form, but it was darker than the night in colour. It just moved across the road. He said, south of the river, there's been quite a few sightings of a half-deer, half-man creature, very similar to the puka in Celtic folklore. It wasn't too long after that that two deer legs were found abandoned in the middle of that road. One local chap stated that he felt that he'd hit a dogman on the road a number of years ago although he did not know the name for them back then. He now believes that was the creature that he hit. He said, It had been a foggy morning, and I was driving by in my Mini. I hit something crossing the road, and it spun the Mini 360 degrees. I saw an animal lying there, and it sprang up, and it turned around with yellow eyes, and it had the hind legs of a dog, and it just bounded off. What is it about this area that brings in so many strange and supernatural reports? There's certainly a cluster of cryptid reports around the Scarby Junction. I wonder if there's something as simple as the estuary is at play and the wealth of the resources that you find there. Or is there something in or on the land that is an attractant in some way? Our next report takes place a very short drive from Scarby and closer to the coast. It came in during COVID when the roads were really quiet due to lockdown restrictions. The report was taken by two BBR investigators who are local to the area. In this case, the creature is examining something close to the roadway. The witness said, I contacted your members Mark and Sean Spikins as I had a strange experience close to Market Raisin. Tuesday, 7th of April, and I was driving on the Riverbane Road towards the A157 about 8.15pm. I was driving around a bend with my full beam on, and as soon as I got around the bend, I noticed something through the cab window. I think I saw a Sasquatch. I don't know what else to call it. I immediately slowed down to get a closer look. I could not believe what I was seeing at the time, but I saw it clearly, to the point that I could see the whole left side of its body from head to toe. 
Now, the head on this creature was strange. It looked more oval, kind of longer in shape on the top. And it was on the right-hand side of the road, about 30 metres away from me. It was standing near a small forest, and it was facing away from me, so I could only see its back and its side. It was tall, at least eight feet tall, very thick and extremely muscular in its body. It looked to be a thick, dark brown in colour. Its hands were easily past its knees because it had very long and muscular arms. Its upper body was a lot thicker than the lower part, i.e. its legs. And the shoulders looked to be twice the size of a silverback gorilla in body mass. I've seen those in zoos. I got about 10, 15 metres closer to where it was standing. And as I did this, the Sasquatch dipped slightly, stepped off into the trees and disappeared. After it was gone, I slowed the van to a stop and I looked out and I could see a freshly killed rabbit on the floor, exactly where it had been standing. But there were no visual signs of blood, no injury on the rabbit. It looked like a quick and instinct kill. I didn't stop too long as I was on a route. I had to make a delivery and I was on a time frame. At the time, due to lockdown restrictions, we weren't actually allowed out on the roads unless we were doing vital deliveries or something like that. So the roads were really empty during lockdown. And a slow lane in Market Raisin would be empty for long periods of time throughout the day and the evening. Our witness, as I said, was a delivery driver. He had several stops before and after he saw the creature. I asked him why he called it a Sasquatch, as that's quite rare. And he said he knew the subjects of Sasquatch and he was in no doubt that that is what he saw that evening. Was the rabbit found where the creature was standing fresh roadkill? Or a fresh kill that the creature had made itself and left behind due to our witnesses' arrival? I'm really nosy, so I had to circle back around to see if that rabbit had gone. I want to know if it come back for it. I'd also have looked for any signs of that creature moving through there on a regular basis, but you can't expect that from a witness, you see. It's different. The area, though, is just like Scarby and Hiddleston, as there's a lot of green land, woodlands, farm fields, there's lots to forage and eat from. There are ample streams to fish from, and the coast is a short walk away. This is exactly where humans would have settled, when our oldest ancestors walked here. It has all of the resources you need if you possess the knowledge on what they are and what they're used for. Now, there is another account in the northeast of England set in the Northumbrian wilds where a creature is seen possibly eating something from the road as a bus full of children and a very shocked driver drove by one morning on a route they take every day. The area where this road is quite rural and there are so many resources available out there, it would be paradise for anyone wishing to live wild. It's one of the areas where people head to hike and wild camp. In my eyes, it's as close to Albany as you can get. I remember speaking to a wild camper who had his camp and equipment mess with on one adventure in the same area. Whatever it was he saw emitting eye shine when he was answering a call of nature was so heavy it crushed his kettle as it walked away. The eye shine was around seven feet high and he promptly jumped into his tent, zipped up and his tarp was then pulled away from his tent. Next, we hear from a couple who experienced seeing big cats in the same area and the reports of large felines roaming there are in the hundreds, which tells me there's plenty of food for an A-type predator. But what the husband saw was definitely not a cat. This next report came in in 2018 and it was made by a wife on behalf of a husband and she said, I'm making this report on behalf of my husband who spends most days along this stretch of road going to and from work as he drives a bus on that route. He's used to being in the area in all weathers and has on occasion seen a large black cat run out in front of him as he's driving, which to be fair is not that unusual up here now. Even the deer can run out into the road without any notice. So you have to keep your eye on the size of the roads and your wits about you when you're driving. The area is heavily wooded, ample wildlife and habitat to enable anything to hide out if it wanted to. It would enable them visibility, she said, 
until they're right there in front of you in the road. So drivers tend to pay attention to anything running from the side of the road. This particular morning, it was around 8.40 a.m. So it was dark, your typical northern winter morning, probably Feb, March 2018. My husband was driving along the road as normal, keeping an eye out for deer. We live quite close to this area and we have both heard strange noises ourselves at night from something we can't identify, to be honest. As my husband was making his way down the road, he was astonished to see what he would later describe to me when he got home as a Bigfoot type creature. He said he passed it, driving quite quickly. So he couldn't give me any real in-depth details about his facial features or anything like that. When I pushed him for a description, he just said it was a large, hairy, Bigfoot type creature standing on the edge of the forest. And he said, I saw it as it was picked out by the lights from the bus. I didn't really know what to say to that. So we both just left it at that. And I looked for somewhere I could report this to. It is now less than a month later. My husband had another sighting of this creature on the way to kill out this morning. He was driving the same route he drove last time, and as he got closer to kill out, almost to the place in the road as the last time, he again saw the creature. But this time the Bigfoot was standing further out from the trees and more towards the road. It was standing on a dirt track, more out in the open. Today was a bright, sunny day even though we still had snow on the ground. Perfect spring weather. So my husband said it stood out much closer than before and he got a better look at it. He shook him up as he was just startled to see it standing there again, not really doing anything to hide itself. It was just standing out in the open like that. Anyone passing by would also see it surely. As my husband was explaining what happened, he said, It was bending down like it had maybe caught something in the grass. It looked like it was trying to pull something up to its face. My husband told the lad that sits in the front seat to look over and see what he thought it was. He saw it, but he didn't know what to call it. So my husband said it was a Bigfoot, which the lad said he'd heard of, but never seen before. My husband said, as they drove past it, the Bigfoot moved its head sideways to look directly at them, and my husband said its face had eight light features. He also said it looked to be over eight feet tall and was very broad across the shoulders. Definitely wasn't human. It put whatever it had caught up to its mouth and started eating. When they got to their destination, there's another man who works there and he drives the other minibus that sets off in front of my husband. So my husband explained what he'd seen And he told him that he thought it was a Bigfoot and that it was the second time he'd seen one there. The other driver said he'd seen one of them running in front of the minibus one night last summer, but he didn't know what it was and didn't know what to call it. My husband thinks that there might be a route over the top of the fells from Hamsterle, Killo, and over to Kielder Forest and down to Harwood. I would agree with her husband. Hamsterle, Killo, Kielder, all have Bigfoot reports. Several creatures have been seen and reported there. My drivers, farmers, hikers, dog walkers and wild campers. The hills are home to many a strange creature and the number of cat reports reaches into triple figures. A report was made in 2018 by a cryptid researcher who was looking into some cases in the area. He's an independent investigator and has been for a number of years now after his own experience happened in Hamsterley Forest a number of years ago. He was out investigating and they were going to stay the night, so he went out with quite a few people. They set up camp and as they were walking around the area, they came to a number of places where the area had almost been barricaded and they took down those barricades and pushed back in. Um, They heard a lot of uh, strange noises and stones began to be thrown and it said one of the chaps got out his torch and it was at that point he said we heard a noise similar to one we'd heard earlier this time we shone the torch in the trees and there in the light just standing there was a dark figure it was about seven feet tall and it was half hiding behind the trees 
He turned the light off for a second and then he turned it back on again. And it was now crouched down and it was behind the fence. My friend quickly turned the light off again, put it back on and it had gone. There was nothing to see and there was no noise of it moving away. This figure was all black in colour and massive in size. The lads with me were spooked and so was I. They wouldn't go back into the woods and I agreed. We sat down around the campfire. All was quiet for a while. But then it started getting creepy again. The atmosphere changed completely and we heard a strange chinking noise and we realised something was tossing stones at us, one or two every now and again. Then we heard footsteps coming towards us, but they stopped when I shone the light in their direction. There was nothing there. This went on and off for a few hours, over and over. So we finally decided we'd have to get up and go and investigate what was throwing the stones at camp. We took with us the torches, we shone them in the tree line and bushes. You couldn't find or see anything that could be out there throwing stones. The noises and activity didn't stop when we got up to look around. We could still hear the footsteps and more pebbles and small stones were being thrown at us. At one point, the stones hit me in the face. A few just missed my face a couple of times, but I couldn't see what was throwing them at me. We were spooked by all this. It felt like we were being pushed back to the area where we'd parked and out of the forest by something that we couldn't see. He said, without thinking about it, we went back to the car, at which point the footsteps started again, coming right up to us, but he couldn't see what was making them. And then suddenly, the car began to shake violently. We couldn't believe what we were seeing. The back end of the car was being shaken up and down as if something we couldn't see had hold of it and was hefting it up and down and pushing it from side to side. We couldn't do anything other than look at each other and then all look about to see what was happening. It was utter confusion, but nothing was there that we could see. When the shaking of the car stopped, we had all had enough and we jumped in the car and got the hell out of there. I go back to the area at some point in the daytime, but not at night. It's not a place people should go to alone or at night. This is the second set of investigators to report being scared from the woods. In September 2011, a paranormal team who would attend camping for a four-day investigation were surrounded by wood knocking, footsteps and visitors close to camp. And on one return journey through the woods, they saw a tall, dark figure walking away from them into the trees and they too packed up and left. As we bring tonight's podcast to a close, I would like to thank Steve and all of the witnesses who came forward and shared their experience with the public. And if you're thinking about sharing yours, just know that you're not alone. Out there, there are hundreds of people who have never discussed the event that happened to them. Hopefully, over time, we can change that. Thank you for joining me tonight. I look forward to sitting down and sharing your time for a while every week. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I will be back at the same time, same day, next week. Good night.